Manny from Manny Jean Chic. I wanted to go ahead and film my January favorites. I'm filming this at like 9 o'clock at night. I wasn't going to film it today, but I was like, you know what? If I don't get this thing filmed, it's going to be the end of February. And you guys are never going to know what my January favorites were. So I decided I'm going to film this. So we're filming this pajama party style. So I'm wearing my pajamas. I'm, I have so, sleep pants on that I'm not going to share because I really like them. And, they, uh, they're very childish. So, my January favorites. January was a very, very, it was a good month. It was a busy month. We were very blessed with our shop and the success with that and at work. I mean, work was crazy, but it's just, it was a really good month. It was a good way to start out the year. It, interesting, it didn't really start out that way, but by the end of the month, it ended pretty well. So, I have quite a few favorites to show you guys and quite a few different things. So the first thing I wanted to share with you guys is you probably noticed that I'm not in where I normally film and that's because I'm sitting at our new bar which if you saw my vlog video that I posted on Sunday you guys know that we got we went shopping for a bookcase and a desk and office stuff for our studios and we walked into the bar in two metal bar stools. so I'll include a picture here so funny that we, we, we found this bar, right? And it was just, it was like love at first sight for both of us. And they worked the price down, because we bought it at an antique slash resale shop. And they worked the price down so much that we literally kind of stole it. But not really stole it, but we just got a good deal on it. So we ended up, we got it, and we both absolutely love it. So I decided to film here just for something different. So I have water in my little cup here so you guys don't think I'm sitting at my bar having a cocktail at 9 o'clock at night on a Tuesday because I hear that's frowned upon when you have to work on a Wednesday. So that's my number one favorite for the month of January is this bar. The bar stools are made out of old tractor seats, which is the metal tractor seats, and let me tell you my tush does not appreciate them as much as I thought that it would. They are not the most comfortable bar stools. But they look really cool, so I guess that's what matters. What matters, right? It's aesthetically pleasing. On to life favorites and kind of like my necessities for the month. I have, you guys know, I'm constantly changing in and out of planners, using different planners. I have so many different planning systems for so many different things. And this month, I really, well, December and January, I really started embracing the Traveler's Notebook style. Now this is the Chic Dory that's from my shop. This is the one that Brett made for me because it has my little Kimber on it. And I love the Traveler's Notebook style. I think that it's probably my favorite planning style now because me being compulsive, I can change out these notebooks really quick for whatever I need to use. The only thing that, I'm, that, I, that I want to get is, or maybe make, I don't know, <laughs> we'll figure that out. I just bought a new sewing machine and I haven't used it yet. So I don't know how great my sewing abilities are. But I would love to have a place where I could put my debit cards and stuff like that. So I actually wouldn't need a wallet now. Just a thought. But I have my Yellow Paper House monthly calendar in here. Which you, if you didn't see my February plan with me, I'll include a link down below. And I use stickers from my shop. So that's the monthly layout that I'm using in here. The daily layout, I'm using a Yellow Paper House daily insert notebook in here. I like it, I don't love it. It's not one of my January favorites, but I still wanna show you guys what I'm using. I appreciate the concept. I just need something probably a little bit more different. I have one for February, one for March. So I'll get them used up, but then I'll probably end up creating my own. And then I also have a Moleskine notebook in here because I'm constantly writing lists. So that's why I'm just, I'm, I'm loving the Traveler's Notebook style, which we call them Chic Dories. So if you're interested in getting any Chic Dory, they start at $35 and you can get them at shopmeandjeanchic.com. We have like 12 colors now. Brett's been a very busy boy. The other thing that I'm going to show you guys that's been my January favorite is something that I've been testing out this month. And we will be releasing them here soon. I... Haven't fully decided yet when I'm going to release these. Maybe next Monday. But I took down my my inserts, like my blog planner, my YouTube planner, my Periscope planner, my Etsy shop planner, well, the Etsy shop daily insert, and some of my more popular inserts, 
I shrunk them down, reconfigured them, and put them into Traveler's Notebook size. So now, I don't know if my lights are like totally blowing this out or not. So this is the first time I've ever filmed with my new lights. So we'll see how this goes. But what I did was I took in my, actually the video is posted. It's how to make a Traveler's Notebook insert and I'll put a link down below. But I just took my Target dividers, printed out my inserts, stapled them in, which you'll also see that in my favorites. And we also, you know what? I also have a paper cutter that I can't show you guys because it's huge, but it is amazing. And I'll put a link down to it below. It will cut like 400 sheets of paper at once. I'm not allowed to use it because Brett's concerned I would, I would cut my fingers off, which could happen. You know, there's a 50-50 shot there. So I decided that I would to move my inserts into my traveler's notebook. So this is the color electric violet. And I love having them in a separate notebook. So I actually have three in here right now. I have my YouTube planner, well my YouTube video planner, my blog planner, and then my Periscope planner in here. And I just love having them in a separate notebook because I know where to find them when I'm looking for a specific blog post that I need to write or a video where I'm at on it. Love these. My next monthly favorite is, well, that's not a favorite. You will go over here because you, you're not a favorite. My long arm stapler. I got this on Amazon this month and because I was making the traveler's notebook inserts, right? So regular staplers, I didn't think would work. And then my friend Svetlana <laughs> basically shared like a life hack with me on it. And she's like, well, you just open it up and put it on a, on a um, eraser and then you can peel it right off. And I was like, wow, good thing this wasn't expensive. So what this is, it's literally a long arm stapler and you can staple all the way back to here. So if you have like a really large book, I mean, this goes to 12 inches. So you can have a 12 inch book and then you staple in the middle and it told it, 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 it will go through, I use 30, well, 28 to 32 pound paper, depending on what insert I'm doing. And it'll staple 15 to 20 pages, no problem. I love this thing. So I'll also have a link down to it below. I, again, I got it on Amazon. Amazon's having their Amazon Prime thing, where if you don't want to pay the 100 bucks for the year, you can do 9.99 a month, which in my opinion is a good deal. We've already saved, or it's already probably paid for itself with the shipping, but you also can move this plastic piece here back and forth so it'll give you a guide. Like I have mine set on my traveler's notebook so I know exactly where I need to staple every single time and I flip and love this thing. My next favorite is a fashion favorite this month which is something that you guys have not seen in a while on my favorites videos. I don't know. It's been really weird lately. I've been in such a jeans and a t-shirt rut where I just want to be comfortable all the time. I think maybe it's because we went from like 110 degrees to like negative 12 overnight and I just want to be warm and comfortable. But I bought these boots on Torrid and I, being a fluffy girl, have a hard time finding halves. It's like the hardest part of being fluffy is finding boots that fit and these fit my calves perfect. I love them because they have fringe. You guys can see the fringe on it. They're flat, so they don't have a heel on it, which is great. So I can wear these like all the time. I, um, my, my Torrid order was so funny. I literally looked like the 80s like threw up on me in their order. Cause I had the fringe boots. And then this is also one of the shirts I got, which is a Kiss t-shirt. Cause Kiss is one of my favorite bands. Even though I haven't really listened to them lately that much. Should we get into that? And then I also got a pair of Esther Wash jeans. So I was like, huh, probably shouldn't wear those all together. The other, and I also have some really fun beauty favorites this month because again, kind of along with fashion, I haven't really been wearing all that much makeup. I haven't even been buying that much makeup, which Brett likes that. <laughs> but I've been buying, when I have bought makeup, I've been buying ColourPop because I ordered some of their eyeshadows, which this is my, and I have some coming actually. But this is my ColourPop eyeshadow collection. I have quite a few of them. They're all neutrals because heaven forbid I buy a colorful eyeshadow. Not gonna happen. You know what? I do have a colorful eyeshadow in here. It's like a silvery blue. It's called Crinkle. But, oh, and I have kind of like a red too. It's called Drift. 
Anyways, this is not a ColourPop collection video. But I've been buying the ColourPop eyeshadows for a couple months now. Pro no, probably like about six months. I've been buying like here and there as I've been having sales and stuff. And I recently started really using them. I, you guys, like these better than MAC. I said it. I don't know, MAC may like disown me now. I may never get to go shop in their stores again. But me, a diehard MAC girl, I would literally buy anything that MAC put a label on and I would just purchase it, no questions asked. I actually like ColourPop eyeshadows a whole lot better. And they're only five bucks a piece. This is one of my newest acquisitions and it's in the color Hanky Panky. And the only reason why I bought this eyeshadow, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, is because my bloodhound's name is Hank and he is very close to this color. That's why I bought it. I don't even really like the color. It's very neutral and I have a ton of neutral eyeshadows, but if they name an eyeshadow after my dog, I have to get it. And it's just a beautiful brown. It reminds me a little bit of Soft Brown by MAC. It'd be a beautiful lid color or a really pretty crease color. It'd be a great blending shade too if you're going for kind of a neutral smoky look. What I love about ColourPop's eyeshadows is they have such a great feel to them. They last forever on the eye. I have to use eye primers with like everything. I don't have to use an eye primer with these. They stay on, which says a lot. The other ColourPop favorite of the month is I have recently discovered in the month of uh, December, I think it was. Yeah, it was December. The ColourPop lippy sticks. Oh my goodness gracious. These are addicting. They're five bucks a piece, so they're like almost free, right? Except for when you buy a gazillion of them, then they add up. But I I love these things. And okay, again, diehard Mac girl. Love MAC lipsticks, that's like my treat on paydays so is I would go get a new MAC lipstick. I haven't bought a MAC lipstick in months. Well, okay, I'm gonna face that. I haven't bought a non-limited edition MAC lipstick in months because you, you guys know you gotta buy the MAC lipsticks to get the limited edition packaging, right? I know. But let me tell you guys my favorite colors of these. The first one that I have is an Aquarius. This is one that's from Kathleen Lights. It is a cream. It's a really pretty, very neutral pink. I love the size of these. I remember way back when I was younger, like some of the skinnier lipsticks and they would just be perfect for, for application. I can apply these without a mirror and I won't look like a clown. I love these. This is Aquarius. The next one I have is 54, which came in this set. I think it's the Vixen set. And it's a really pretty dark color. Beautiful, love this shade. And this is a pearlized. It's a really pretty deep red. Very vampy. Uh, Ruffle, not a favorite. Ruffle's a pretty neutral, but it's, it's not one of my favorites. The thing with, with their mattes, is their mattes do not feel overly drying on the lips. And they stay put for, for a decent amount of time without having a lip liner, which says a lot. Grunge is one of my favorites because I'm a huge Nirvana fan. So I have Grunge and Nevermind. Strictly bought them because of the Nirvana names and references. That's how I purchase makeup. <laughs> By band names and dog names, apparently. That is Grunge. I also have like an order of five more of these coming because I just I love them. I can't go buying them. It's like my new obsession is ColourPop. This is a book that I bought Brett for Christmas and <laughs> you guys have heard me talk about these guys before but um, my, on Instagram, Mike the Cop, Deputy Bookum, Deputy Hookum, uh, Officer Daniels, and Angry Cops, they are law enforcement viners hysterical love these guys but Mike the Cop is part of a foundation called Humanize the Badge and he recently co-authored a book called Dear Officer when I saw this book I had no idea what was in this by the way when I saw this book I purchased it because you know my husband's law enforcement Brett's law enforcement and a lot of people had great reviews on it Deputy 
Wolcom or Holcomb, I can't remember which one's which, the, the shorter one, not the tall one. He had mentioned this book, so I went ahead and got it for Brett for Christmas. Well, I did a Periscope when I first got this order, and I didn't know what was in it at all. Had no clue. I gotta be really careful not to get this lipstick on Brett's book, otherwise he's gonna be so mad. But when I was flipping through it, I was, it really touched me because they have one of Rear Rancho PD's badges in here. Which, you guys remember, when I was vlogging and doing the whole KRQE thing, um, a Rear Rancho PD officer was murdered in the line of duty. His name was Nigel Bunner. We went to his memorial, and you know, I, I vlogged actually his memorial, and then that's what sparked my law enforcement video. So I wasn't expecting to see this. And I'll be honest, I really didn't have the attention of reading it because this stuff is hard and it hurts. And it is a law enforcement wife, it's difficult sometimes to deal with to find the strength to realize that this stuff that they talk about in this book, the hatred, um, you know, the misunderstandings, the, the lack of support, all of this stuff like really happens. And as somebody's wife was law enforcement, you know, you have to be there for them. But on the flip side, you also have to realize that this stuff happens. So, I've been married for nine years now. I feel like an old married hag. But when I read this book, I thought it was so touching just because of Rear Rancho PD being in here, but also from a law enforcement wife's point of view, I think that, and Brett actually thinks the same way that I do, that more family members should read this book because it really gives you a little bit of insight into what it's really like to be law enforcement. There are many different segues of law enforcement. I mean, you have corrections to detention, to cops on the street, to you know administration. There's such a variety of officers that are out there. And it just feels like, you know, the good detention, office. which is amazing because law enforcement needs that. But then it's like when something bad happens, every law enforcement officer gets labeled. And that's not fair. So one of the things in this book, you now granted it's been a little while since I read this book, one of the things in this book is it talks about, you know, a little bit of humanity when it comes to law enforcement. And, you know, the pictures, I thought it was really interesting. When I first was flipping through, I was like, why are all the pictures black and white? You don't meet shiny object syndrome. I'm like, well, I want, I want color pictures. <laughs> but when you read this book, you understand why the pictures are black and white. They invoke an emotion. And I just thought that that was really interesting. I thought it was a great choice. Um, you know, let me, an officer's letter to his children, which is, was interesting to read because we don't have kids. Um, lessons in losing a brother. Mike the cop lost his actual blood brother. He was murdered in Taylor, Michigan. And that's something that, you know, when a member of law enforcement is murdered, the whole family feels it. But when it's your blood brother, couldn't imagine dealing with that. Uh, open letters to rookie spouses. I love the pictures of the canines because police canines have like, a special place in my heart and it makes me smile thinking about them because it's like, I, you could not ask for a better partner in my opinion than a police canine. M Maddie, our bloodhound, is a retired uh, search canine. And you know, she may not be a badass, she may not be you know taking people down, but she'll find them sometimes. Now that she's retired, she's like, eh, just give me the cookies. But so police canines have a special place in my heart. And I just thought it was really interesting that they even put some of the police canines in here. So anyways, check out this book, Dear Officer. My last favorite for the month. If you guys have a Canon T5i, <laughs> you've had this happen. You wake up and you're like, oh, I'm gonna film a bunch of videos today. It's gonna be so awesome. And your battery's dead or you film for like five minutes and your battery's dead, or you're in the middle of a craft tutorial and you're at the good part and then your battery dies. Batteries are not cheap for cameras <laughs> at all. I've had my T5i for like over a year 
And this is the first time I have bought extra batteries for it because every time I would go to buy a battery, I'm like, I'm not spending $40 on a battery for a camera. I'll just plan better. Well, after having my camera for a year, I didn't plan better. So it was on Amazon. And again, I think this was a late night Amazon order. But I found this set and it's by BM Premium. Two, two Canon batteries, an AC-DC battery charger, a cleaning cloth, which I have no idea where that went. Um, and yeah, that's it. So you get two batteries that fit your Canon T5i. I was a little skeptical if these batteries would work or not because I saw a lot of people on there were saying, well, they, they didn't work in my T5i. But then there was other people on there like, oh, it does work in my T5i. So I was like, who do you believe? Now I think this set was like $20, so it wasn't overly expensive. Uh, and the fact that you get two batteries, I will say these batteries work just fine in my camera. The only thing that happens sometimes on my T5i is since these aren't actual Canon batteries, my T5i won't pick up on like, you know when your battery starts draining, how you have like the marks on there, it's in thirds. My, my camera won't pick up on that. But it gives me the, like if I have, I don't know, like five minutes left on my battery, it'll pop up and say, you know, battery low or whatever it says. Normally I ignore it because I'm talking and I can't see it anyway with my glasses on and then my camera just dies. So I got two batteries for this thing. And I had no idea because I didn't read the listing. It came with a car charger, which I think is awesome because we do a lot, of, well, we don't do a lot anymore, but we really want to get back into doing like 4x4 adventures and stuff like that. So this would be perfect to have and keep an Abbey for when we need to charge the camera batteries. So it comes with the, the car charger, right? And then I didn't know this because I wasn't paying attention, but this plugs in to this adapter, which on the back has a plug, so you can plug it into your wall. So I basically got two camera batteries, a charger, a car charger, and if I ever go to Europe or any other country that doesn't have this, they gave me this. Uh, give this a month and it's gonna, I'm gonna lose it, so. I don't even know why I'm keeping it. But that is, oh, you know what, I forgot to show you one more favorite. So Nick said I have one more favorite. But I do really like the camera battery set and it's been very helpful because I talk a lot. Okay, my last favorite, I promise, this is the last favorite, is Brett got me into writing with a fountain pen. I, a pen's a pen is a pen to me. Until I started with my planners. And then I went from the flare pens to the Styler pens and now I get all fancy and I write with a fountain pen. And some oil off, my bestie actually turned me on to these two. This is a Pilot Metropolitan. I think it's a medium tip. I don't know what that means. But what I love about this pen is it writes so smooth. And I always thought like fountain pens were for like calligraphy and for people who had decent handwriting. I write like I'm having a seizure. So I never thought I'd ever use one. And when Brett started getting into them and he would buy them and he would show them to me, I'm like, whatever, a pen. Never got excited for it. Well, this is what I did. He actually ordered the silver one of this for me. Or no, for him. And I wrote with it and I liked it. Well, then I found a pen store in Albuquerque called Pen and Pad and they sold these. So I went and I ordered him a Valentine's Day present, but they had this metropolitan dot, but was full gold. So I ended up getting it for me. <laughs> I'm not good with instructions at all, like pictures or written. I just, I can't follow them. I just, I don't have the patience. So I had to call Brett at work and I'm like, how do I put the ink in this thing? I don't know how to put the ink in this thing. So he had to tell me how to put the ink in the pen because I, I didn't know how, I never used them before. He always would set them up. So I'm really enjoying using it. I love using it. It writes great. It's on Amazon, I think they're about $18. I'll include the link down below. Um, he's been slowly collecting more fountain pens. I'm not gonna get into it past this because you know, I, again, I give this pen like two months and it's going to be lost. 
I just, I can't keep it. But for the two months I'm gonna have this pen, I'm gonna love it. So it is a great pen. And if you guys check out Anne Samoyloff, she's doing the February bullet journaling challenge with me with Boho Berry, who Anne actually turned me on to Boho Berry. And then I became obsessed with Boho Berry, just like Anne became obsessed with Boho Berry. This is how it works with me and Anne. We'll like something and like I'll show her it and then we both become like completely obsessed. We, we literally, our friendship is based on complete obsession or both of us are like, meh. Which is hysterical because now we're both into bullet journaling. But she bought the teal colored one and she posted in some pictures. So Brett actually ordered the teal color one too. And it's it's a beautiful pen. But like he's he's ordered different ink for them and he's filled ink and he's using different I don't know. I just use ink that came with it and it's for like a starter fountain pen. I think it's really good. So now for my not so favorite of the month. <laughs> when we were antiquing on Saturday, we went to Cost Plus World Market, which we were trying to catch maybe their furniture sales. We were thinking about getting a dining table anyways. I love their popcorn at World Market. There's something about their brand of popcorn that is just, it's my favorite. When we were walking out, I saw these and they're Tate's Bake Shop, which should have given me a clue Uniquely crispy, deeply delicious chocolate chip cookies. I just saw chocolate chip cookies and I was like, yes, get into my cart. So, my, oh, P.S. I did not have breakfast yet when I got these. So I was like, anything that was food at World Market, I was putting in my cart. So we get out to the truck. And I, they're, they're, they're so bad that we ate a whole section of them. But we get out to the truck and there are these teeny tiny thin little chocolate chip cookies. Now, th that wouldn't bother me as much because I don't mind crispy chocolate chip cookies. It's the taste <laughs> that bothers me. They taste like burned chocolate chip cookies. They taste like my mom made. My mom cannot bake. No matter what she says, I would never invite her when I was a kid to do like bake sales because she, <laughs> Brett is shaking his head, because she cannot bake. And I would never subject anybody to that. My mom, if she's watching this, she's shaking her head because she knows. They just, they don't have a very good flavor. I'm just not a fan. So, do you guys remember in Despicable Me 2 when they were, that's like my life references, the Despicable Me movies and the Minion movie. When they were canning all the jelly and the Minion got some in his mouth and he was like, ah, and he was like trying to take out his mouth. That was me sitting in Abby eating one of these cookies. Now I will say once you have one, you could do two. But after two, you're just like, they taste like burnt chocolate chip cookies. So Tate's Bake Shop, I, 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 I just, they do not chocolate chip. So I hope you guys enjoyed my favorites video. I know I had like a lot of stuff in the month of January, but it was, it was just a good shopping month, except for the cookies. The cookies were not, were not a good shopping month. So I hope you guys enjoyed So I hope you guys enjoyed my favorites video for the month. I apparently have other stuff to show you guys that are Brett's favorites. Is that it? You have more favorites? You have two more? So Brett brought some favorites over here, and by some I mean we're gonna be here for about another 30 minutes. What are your favorites? So his first favorite, as he points to me, is may I add, I we were we were antiquing, and this was on the very bottom shelf, and I saw it. And then he actually, I was going to put it back, but he actually read the letters. This is a carrying case, or like a box, for a World War II aircraft camera for a P-38. I don't know what any of that stuff is. But isn't it pretty? <laughs> it's one of the cameras that, and I'll put a link to a video down below that Brett actually found online. Um, that literally shows them using the camera in World War II. And this is one of the cases that they were in. 
And I love the patina on it. I just thought it was beautiful. And Brett fell in love with it too. But he recognized what it was right away. So I just thought it was beautiful. But I think he's going to actually try to rest not restore a little bit, but like preserve it a little bit more because the paint is actually chipping off a little bit. So, okay, the next thing he got is, and this was when we were all antiquing on Saturday. We, we both did pretty well, but he got a old wrench. Right? It's a wrench. Would you like to tell me about this wrench? It's a wrench, and it's really old. And it has old tape on it, right? Leather? What is the wrench? <laughs> it's leather grip tape. It's leather grip tape. Is it old leather grip tape? It is old leather grip tape. I don't know. What, I just know it's a wrench. But it screws up and it screws down. I don't know anything about wrenches except for I've almost smacked myself in the face like three times with it. You might want to take that. <laughs> This is Brett's chic dory that he actually made himself. First off, look at how thick that leather is. Yes. And it says, keep calm and trust your negotiator. This is one of the samples of the embossing that he actually can do. Um, you can come up with your own saying. He can emboss it on there as long as, you know, we can get kind of a blockier text so he can emboss that. Um, script is a little hard to emboss onto leather because he actually burns this onto the leather. And this is in the color Wild West. And then his on the inside is just nude or, or naked. And I love his because his is super soft. Have you been taking it to work? Mm -hmm. So that is his chic dory. And he has this really cool charm on it that says Exhibit A. <laughs> that one ever... <gasps> really? You okay? <laughs> Me. Try to stab you and stab yourself. What okay. is that? This is a dip calligraphy pen. It now has blood. Probably. This is, make sure you So Brett made a couple, well Brett made one dip pen and then he actually purchased another dip pen. But this is one of the dip pens that he actually made, which is a red pheasant's feather. And he just, I don't know, how would he use to do this? It, it just made a dip pen out of it. He's made a dip pen out of it. Uh, P.S. These are very sharp. <laughs> and the, again, this is one that he made. I've actually wrote with these, and they're not as hard as what I thought. Because, okay, again, like I'm the messiest person ever, and if I have the ability to make a mess, it's going to happen. But the dip ink that he uses is Speedball. And this is in the color indigo blue. Dip ink, my understanding, is thicker than regular fountain pen ink. So what you do is you dip the tip in and then you, this way, right? This way? Mm -hmm. And then you just brush it off on the cap and press down and write. I, I did not think it was that easy, but I think that's why like our founding fathers wrote a lot because it's really not that hard. Again, this is Speedball Ink in Indigo Blue, and this is a pen that he made out of a pheasant feather. Would you guys like him to do a DIY on how to do this? And this is another calligraphy dip pen that he's been using and loving. Um, this is the one that I bent the tip on. I'm not sure where he got this one, but it has like a nice weight to it. I think I wrote with this one too. So if you guys use fountain pens or dip pens, let me know below because Brett's really getting into them more than kind of what I am. Again, I just, I'm so worried about making a mess out of everything. He also has two of the Pilot Metropolitan pens, like what my gold one is. These are in, I think this is like a turquoise color or teal, and this one is, I shouldn't be holding them like that, and this one is gray. I was wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be all safe, see? This is why I'm not allowed to have nice stuff. But he got these two. Uh, these are both medium tip also. I just got ink all over me. The medium tip, which you guys may not be able to see because I'm holding way too much stuff in my hand. I'll show you guys the tip. Again, for a beginner fountain pen, if I can use them, anybody can use them. These chairs do not like my ass bone. This is one of his favorite inks, and this is... Private Reserve Ink and Copper Burst. When Brett does 
Like, the reason why he likes the ink refills or filling his own ink is because he likes to coordinate the color of the ink with the pens. And this is actually one that he has in a special pen that I'm going to show you in a second. This is his other favorite ink bottle, and this is Blue Velvet. I don't know the brand, but I'll see if I can find it and include a link to it down below so you guys can check it out. It's actually like an electric blue color. It's really pretty. He actually has this in his turquoise Metropolitan. And... The other pen that he got is a Monte Verde, which is a limited edition pen. It's actually a numbered limited edition pen, and it is this really pretty rose gold, right? This really pretty rose gold pen. The cool thing, and this is why he loves pen, is it's magnet capped. So not only is the tip gorgeous, but It's mini proof, <laughs> but it's all magnet. It also, for being a bigger pen, I mean, it feels good in the hand. It's really pretty. Again, this one's limited edition. And he also has the copper burst ink in it. Now this pen is actually one, I got one too. I don't know where it is, I think it's in my craft room. But when we were at the, what is this thing I'm wearing, by the way? Is this a knife? I'm armed. Take that out. You just grab it like this. Mm -hmm. Which whichever hand it is, so probably that hand, and then push it off with the thumb. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Only you, dude. Let me see the thing so I can put it back in. No, I'm a little concerned right now about my safety. That's plastic. I get stabbed by a pen and then she whacked in the face. <sighs> So the next thing I have is one of the Brett's testing fate to see if I'll stab myself. This is a neck tool that Brett purchased and <laughs> I've been given instructions on how to do this twice so I do not cut myself. So let's see if this actually happens. You pull. You can. Ta-da! And I still have all my fingers. It says Foltz Minimalist, the teeny tiny little blade. What would one use this for? Killing grizzlies. Killing grizzlies, apparently. And then you slide it back on. Woo! I got it. So that is, for sure, our monthly favorites for the month. I hope you guys enjoyed my monthly favorites and Brett's impromptu monthly favorites. I think it's really funny that he, I'm checking to make sure I don't have that knife still on me. So I like fall asleep and stab myself. So I hope you guys enjoyed our monthly favorites. What were some of your favorites for the month of January? I would love to hear it down below. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.